important day. Today, we're unveiling our education reform package for the 2013 legislative session. It focuses on assuring great teaching in every classroom to dramatically raise student achievement in our state. Iowans face a choice that will shape the future of our state for generations to come. We can choose to be bold and endorse educational reforms that will truly transform our schools and prepare our children for the knowledge-driven economy that we live in here in the 21st century, or we can choose to do nothing but pour more resources into the current system and remain entrenched in the status quo, which is putting our children and businesses across the state at a severe disadvantage. I'm ready to invest significant resources into reforms, and we will propose that today, for which we will be seeking legislative approval in the months ahead. This is an investment in student achievement that scales up over five years, starting with $14 million in the first year, $72 million in the second, and at its full implementation, in five years it reaches a total of $187 million annually. Iowans currently invest 43% of our state's entire general fund appropriations in pre-K through 12 education. This compares to 37% of the general fund that was spent back in 1992 when Iowa led the nation in education. Our spending on the current structure went up significantly, both in terms of dollars and proportion of our resources dedicated to it. Yet we've gone from leading the nation by key educational achievement measures to falling in the middle of the pack. So I want to make it very clear, this administration is ready to invest significant new resources in transformational reform that high performing school systems around the world are using to raise student achievement. And I do not believe that we should spend even a minute discussing additional resources to prop up our current educational structure until we have first agreed on reforming how our children, until we have agreed upon reforms our children so richly deserve and so desperately need. Many states and nations have moved ahead of Iowa by continually improving their schools over the last 20 years. Iowa, meanwhile, has slipped from being a top performer to middle of the pack in national tests. Yes, we have good schools with many committed, dedicated educators who work hard to serve our students, but they are stuck in a system designed for the 20th century, not the 21st century. Let's use the talents of our many top teachers to develop world-class schools for the 21st century. Here's how we propose to do that. The centerpiece of our 2013 education reform package is establishing a new teacher leadership and compensation structure. This proposal is based on recommendations made by the Teacher Leadership and Compensation Task Force, a cross-section of Iowans who spent seven months studying how to transform the teaching profession to help students learn more. This was one of six task forces created by the 2012 legislature. Given higher expectations for students today, we must better prepare our new teachers and better support our teachers already in the classroom. It's unrealistic to expect one principal to provide all of the instructional leadership needed in each of Iowa schools. We want leadership teams made up of principals and teachers to provide ongoing professional development in classrooms directly targeted to improving instruction. This will raise the status of the teaching profession and attract and retain more talented educators. We're recommending that we raise beginning teacher salaries from 28,000 to 35,000 and to create new teacher leadership roles, including model, mentor, and lead teachers. They will be paid extra for sharing their expertise and for working additional days, fostering greater collaboration among all educators with coaching and co-teaching aimed at better meeting the needs 
of each of Iowa's students. Given rent, we also want to give brand new teachers a reduced teaching load their first year so they can spend more time learning from outstanding experienced veteran teachers. The structure will be phased in over several years, including an initial year for planning, and an initial year for planning. Each district will have flexibility to customize the career paths to meet their local needs. Our initiative also helps Iowa's high need students, Iowa's high need schools, become more competitive in recruiting and retaining teachers by providing an additional stipend to reduce educator turnover. This initiative builds on landmark bipartisan legislation approved back in 2001 that created a career ladder for teachers, but it was never funded. Until now, that is. Now we must provide sustainable, long-term funding to really help transform the teaching profession and improve student achievement. First of all, I would like to ask you to watch a short video on why it's so critical that we make this change. Then, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds will outline four additional pieces of our educational package, and Director Glass will then talk about why we are taking this approach to create world-class schools in Iowa. At the heart of every Iowa community is a school, and within these schools are educators who do their very best to teach our children. These educators deserve our respect and appreciation. <coughs> Iowa is in a position to set a new vision for the teaching profession. We're doing great things. We have great opportunities for students, but we can do so much more. And this is creating the opportunity for more than a select few, but for the entire teaching profession in the state. We have a lot of evidence that tells us that uh, the classroom teacher is uh, the, the biggest lever we have to improve student learning. If there's any systems or districts, but this would be across the board. It would truly change education in Iowa and bring us to that level of world-class schools, which is the goal. This is an opportunity, I think, for professionals in that field to stay fresh and motivated and to take on different roles throughout their career. In, 2000, in 2012, 25 Iowans came together over seven months to recommend a system for teacher leadership and compensation as directed by the Iowa legislature, teacher and task force member, Ann Lebo. I think we had an outstanding representation of all parties that needed to be involved in this sort of conversation. We have representations from every you know, school association that's affiliated in the state of Iowa, teachers, administrators, all lenses were represented in part of this conversation, which is important when you're looking for buy-in and making the kind of change that we're looking to make at the state level. The Teacher Leadership and Compensation Task Force members representing K through 12 schools, education associations, the business community, and higher education came to a consensus on a proposal that provides more support and career opportunities for teachers from their first day in the classroom until retirement. The likelihood of burnout and leaving the profession would be so much less because as a new teacher, you're being supported. As a career teacher, you're being supported, giving opportunities to grow and change. As a veteran teacher, you're being recognized for your talents and skills. You have the opportunity to come back as you leave. You can take on so many more different roles that would be fulfilling to you as an educator. The system of support begins with a teacher's first year of employment, which is the residency year. Similar to that of the medical profession, the resident would have intense supervision and a reduced teaching load, allowing time to observe the model, mentor, and lead teachers. Walkie teacher and task force member, Molly Boyle. I can't imagine being a first year teacher and having someone to walk alongside with me and, sh and really, like I said, have those deep conversations with and help support me in learning and growing as a teacher. Teacher pay is another critical piece of the proposal, specifically compensation for teachers who take on more responsibility as well as more attractive starting salaries. 
Task Force member and Grandview President Kent Henning says it's vital to attract the best and the brightest. The students who are looking at going into teaching know that they're not going to be, uh, that they're not going to become wealthy as teachers. But I do find that our students want to feel as though they're being paid a, uh, a salary or compensation that is, that is respectful of, of their talent and what they have, what they've put into their education. If we truly want to honor the profession, we have to start recognizing what they do and widening the net for people to enter the profession so we can raise the pool for everyone. Teachers now, I think it gives you an opportunity to be validated for what you're always doing financially. And I think we're validated in different ways and it can be through recognition or compensation financially. And I think that's important. I think we have this idea that in education, somehow we have to sacrifice compensation or money or the ability to move ahead financially for what we want to do and I don't know why we, we've got to that point. The Iowa Department of Education and task force members have taken these ideas to educators across the state. Some have asked, does the proposal take our best teachers out of the classroom? You're growing the teacher in an attempt to grow the learners. It's just the way I see the model working. So I don't see how that could be a negative. Uh, this proposal uh, actually provides opportunities for the best teachers to get into more classrooms, to extend their influence uh, in their building. Others had questions about funding. We've seen it historically where you hodgepodge things and put something together, they expect you to kind of come up with some makeshift idea of what you have, and that it just simply doesn't work. So it has to be a redefinition of what we do um, that is fully supported financially and by at the state level. Teacher leadership models already exist in pockets of Iowa, according to Jason Glass, director of the Iowa Department of Education. Clearly this is an evidence-based approach that is working. So we have to think about how we, how, how can we uh, put this in place in every school in Iowa, some model uh, 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 that's built on those principles. Um, it is exciting to think that our task force um, may have helped implement uh, truly significant uh, changes that will improve our schools across the state. I feel that we did a really nice job of showing that there's lots of ways for teachers who have proven experience and expertise to strengthen the core profession. We talk about being the best in the world and Iowa now has the opportunity to lead the country in making a change statewide that is the best for teachers, learners, and school systems across the board. Well, good morning. And as Governor Branstad said, the teacher leadership and compensation structure is the centerpiece of the 2013 education reform package, but there are four additional pieces. Number one, the Teach Iowa initiative is aimed at recruiting more of our best students into the teaching profession in a combination with a higher starting salary of $35,000 a year. Teach Iowa expands on existing programs to provide tuition reimbursement to many of our best teachers, students who teach in Iowa for five years with a focus on hard to hire subjects such as math and science. These Teach Iowa scholars will receive an extra $4,000 for each year of service up to $20,000. Teach Iowa also includes a new pilot program for a full year of student teaching in the senior year of college instead of the typical one semester. We know it's important for future teachers to have more clinical experience so that they are ready to be in charge of their own classrooms. This proposal is modeled after a successful initiative at Arizona State University and we hope to put it in place in one private and one public teacher preparation program in Iowa. Number two is establishing college and career ready seals. Students could earn these seals in addition to their high school diploma. A blue ribbon commission of business and education leaders would set high standards for the seals to better define what it means to be college or career ready. A significant share of high school graduates need remedial help when they go on to post-secondary education. And employers often tell us that job applicants lack career-ready skills. 
These seals will build on the work of the Skilled Iowa Initiative at the Iowa Workforce Development, which utilizes the National Career Readiness Certificate and the work of the Governor's Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math Initiative, which I co-chair with Ben Allen. A recent Gallup poll sh uh, found that only about 44% of our students still feel engaged by the time that they're in high school. We must find a way to engage more high school students by providing an education that better connects them to career opportunities they want to pursue in the real world. It will take several years to get the SEALs in place, but starting next year, we want all high school students to have the option to take either a college entrance exam or a workforce readiness test so that they can see where their strengths lie and where they need to improve. And this would be done at no cost to the families. This will better prepare students for the future and better align education with workforce development. Number three is improving educator evaluations. Iowa needs to update existing teacher and administrator evaluations to provide better valuable feedback. This will include deciding how student achievement growth should count. This work should help the state win a waiver from the federal No Child Left Behind law. And number four will be expanding the Iowa Learning Online Program. This proposal expands the existing program at the Iowa Department of Education to allow more high school students the opportunity to take high quality online courses that are taught by Iowa teachers. Small districts that often struggle to find applicants for hard to hire subjects will also find this extremely helpful. This will require an initial state investment, but after three years, the program will be self-sustaining. The bottom line, we want all Iowa students to graduate from high school, college, or career ready. And now it's my pleasure to turn the podium over to Director Glass to talk more about why we believe the 2013 education uh, program is what we need to accomplish that goal. Jason? Thank you. Good morning. Just under an hour from now, the gaveling in of this legislative session will signal an opportunity for Iowa. That opportunity is to take the steps and to fully commit to the journey of making Iowa's education system among the best in the country and the world. In setting the course toward making Iowa's good schools world class, we have culled practices and policies from some of the very best education systems in the world, both within the United States and across the globe. The approaches contained in, in the Governor's Education Reform Package reflect that work and will set Iowa on the path toward a great education system that the state's children and future generations deserve. The centerpiece of the Governor's proposal is a reimagining of the teaching profession going far beyond questionable approaches like simple cash for test score schemes or ineffective strategies of constant incremental spending increases. The governor's education package contains a sophisticated and authentic new vision of the teaching profession. Enhanced opportunities, leadership roles, and compensation approaches lead the way toward an empowered teaching profession. The structure we propose is adapted from some of the best education systems in the world but is specially tailored to Iowa's context and storied educational history. The conditions are right in Iowa for meaningful change. We spent nearly two years engaged in a discussion, calibration, with some incremental progress. I believe now the consensus exists for this generation of Iowa's leaders to make good on our responsibility and our promise to this state and its future, to enact meaningful reforms and make a substantial investment in our schools. I look forward to this upcoming legislative session and the promise that it holds for Iowa schools and children. It's now our turn to move Iowa schools further along the path to greatness. Let us not fail in this moment of tremendous opportunity. This is our opportunity for a transformational education reform. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but I think this is a very thoughtful, systematic approach. We'd be glad to respond to your questions. We think that this is a very well thought out uh, approach that has been able to get uh, significant support from the business community as well as from educational leaders. You've heard from the educational leaders in this. We just had an uh, education summit that was led by the business community and we believe that this will indeed 
lead, as it has in other countries and in other states, to significant improvement in student achievement. No, no, no. We aren't. That's the problem we had last year. The legislature decided to study it. And that's why we did not get. That's why we didn't get the waiver. Uh, we need to quit studying it, and we need to move forward with implementing changes and reform. But we also respect that this is some. This is a process that's going to take some time. It's not just going to, I guess, happen overnight. But other states have passed some pretty significant things in this area, and many of those states have received the waiver that we have not received. I would give Jason the opportunity to talk on this more detail. So the governor's education reform proposal uh, regarding evaluation and the use of student achievement data in evaluation contains a three-year-long process for designing and implementing such a system. So uh, we recognize that this is a contentious and, and uh, significant change, and we want to be thoughtful and inclusive in the design of that structure. But um, uh, make no mistake, uh, the governor's proposal uh, is, an, is an action proposal. It moves us forward. It is not a study. Right. Is that going to be new appropriations or is it going to be diverted from other things? Yes. This is new money that will be provided. Remember, this is built up over a five-year period. The first year is primarily focused on planning and preparation. And so you can look at the chart there and you can see how it's built up. But it is $187 million by the time you get to the fifth year in its full implementation, and that is new money. Now, I guess what we're saying is we want to see this approved before we talk about putting more money into the existing system. Yes. And I will be addressing that issue as well because I believe we need to change the growth in state aid from being allowable growth, which has a property tax component, to being 100 percent state aid where the state doesn't increase local property taxes as part of the school aid formula. Governor, last year you gave, or last session you gave the legislature a 150-some page bill. They, they approved a 26-page right. uh, education reform package. What makes you think this would be any different than what you think is uh, the difference? Well, this is refined and more focused. And we've also had the benefit of these task forces that have worked throughout the interim. Oh, and we have now got, I think, a much greater consensus among both education leaders, you heard from them in the film, but also among the business community. And I think there's a greater recognition more and more among the public in our state also that our present education system is not preparing the students for the jobs of the future. In fact, not even necessarily some of the jobs of today. Because we hear again and again as we travel the state that there are good jobs available, but we don't have people with the right skill sets to fill those jobs. And that's why Skilled Iowa, and I'll be talking about some of these issues tomorrow as well, but that fits in with this as well for upgrading the skills of our existing workforce as well as preparing the uh, students of today for the jobs of tomorrow. That's what's been done in the past, and we said that is counterproductive to have these showdowns and fights over, count, over things like that. Instead, let's pass transformational education reform that's going to really make a difference in improving educational opportunities for our students. We're willing to discuss uh, those other issues, but we believe this needs to be paramount, and this is going to be the issue that we want to see approved before we get into these other things. Are you going to propose a level growth level in your budget? No. I, I in indicated my intention is that 
whatever we end up doing should not be allowable growth which has a property tax component. I, another part of my program is going to be dramatic reduction in our dependency on property taxes and, re, and assuring local governments that the state will replace all of the property tax reduction that we mandate through our reforms for all classes of property with state dollars to replace uh, the property tax money. We uh, have a number of teachers, including I think one of the teachers on that film was a past teacher of the year uh, uh, involved in this. We haven't specifically asked for the endorsement of any of the organizations like the, the ISEA or the School Board Association or school administrators, but they, and, and, and including uh, you saw uh, the president of Grandview University also in there, but we have included leaders from all of those organizations in the task force. They help build the consensus uh, that uh, this recommendation is based on. What's the, uh, what's the measure that you're going to use to, a couple of years down the line to see if this is successful? Is it like we meet Massachusetts on May 4th or what, what are you looking at? Well, I think we need to be looking more than a couple years down the road. We need to probably, this is phased in over a five year period and Massachusetts didn't get to where they are today. Uh, over in a couple of years. They did this over a couple of decades. And I think we have got to, first of all, pass transformational education reform. We've got to stick with it. We've got to make sure that we provide the resources to implement it. We need to be willing to perfect an improvement in the years ahead. But this is, we've been studying and working on this for a long time, and now is the time for action. Well, we will measure student achievement. That is the real measure. I think uh, the NAEP scores are what is kind of universally accepted throughout the country. In 92, we led the nation on NAEP. Today, we're 25th. And so I think NAEP is really uh, considered probably the standard that's recognized throughout. So rather than trying to come up with our own, uh, we think that that's recognized throughout the country. That would be the appropriate measurement. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, specific to the evaluation process, uh, that only pertains to public schools. There are um, elements of the governor's proposal that extend to accredited non-publics, but it really depends on uh, each individual policy, whether it extends or not. In most cases, uh, there are options for the accredited non-publics to take part in components of it uh, if they choose. Well, they passed... Actually, it was passed in 2001, I believe. Yeah. And it was passed in 2001, the career ladder, but then it was never funded. And so what we said, there's, an, there's been a recognition for some time that we needed to make some significant changes and we need to have better opportunities for teachers to gain recognition and to be able to improve their skills and to be able to better transform the teaching profession. And before the legislature has not provided the resources, this puts together a thoughtful, systematic plan that provides the resources, but it provides the resources after we've done the planning and put in place a process that we think will get us the results we need. But it is pushed into the future, so are we assuming that this is your announcement that you're going to run for governor again? No. What, what this is, remember when I came into the governor's office two years ago and we inherited this fiscal mess, and we had all this one-time money being used for ongoing expenses and no long-term planning, we said, we're going to change all of that. We're going to have a two-year biennial budget and a five-year plan. And we have put in place a five-year plan. And that five-year plan has the resources to fund this program, as well as the property tax relief that I will talk about tomorrow for all classes of property. If we continue to have the fiscal discipline that we've put in place the last two years. And I would point out that we have a smaller, more efficient, more transparent government than we had two years ago. And we want to keep it and 
continue to improve on it. Yes, it's funded through the general fund of the state of Iowa, and we have projected, and, and David uh, Roeder will lay this out tomorrow in the briefing he does for the press, as well as for legislators, that we have used reasonable budget projections going forward for the next five years, and this provides the resources to meet all of our recommendations. That's the difference between this administration and the way things were done in the past. They would try to throw things together, find a way to slap the budget together, and say that it was balanced and go home for the year. We said we're going to change that. It's a new day, a new approach, and this is long-term planning. This is kind of what they do in the private sector. This is what has worked at Des Moines University and elsewhere. And so uh, we're working very hard to make sure that we are assured the people of Iowa, the resources will be there to meet this plan. Last question. Governor, the uh, legislature passed some things last year, especially dealing with uh, extra help for kids who need help reading by third grade. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Some of those things didn't get funded last year. Are you including money in your plan this year to get some of those programs started? Uh, well, I'm not sure. I've, we'll be, I think we are. Uh, you want to address that? I'll let you address that. Uh, the, uh, the governor's uh, proposal uh, 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 with these components doesn't include uh, funding for the uh, reading uh, program that was passed last year. Um, although there will be um, uh, discussion, we've been engaged in discussions with legislators uh, about um, uh, running another uh, component of legislation that would um, uh, both look at the existing um, laws that were passed, the 256D block grants that were passed uh, years ago, the law that was passed uh, last year. There needs to be some combination of those two laws um, uh, to clean up that legislation and make it um, more impactful, uh, and to look at the funding stream, both on the uh, old law and the new law that was passed, and how those could be um, uh, clarified and made more efficient. The 256D block grant. Yeah, it's an old um, uh, law that uh, basically passes, flows through um, money to school districts for use for literacy purposes, uh, but it's very broad and vague about how that money is to be used. That was an existing law. Last legislative session, another law was passed, another literacy law was passed uh, that included that uh, third grade retention component. Uh, now we've got both laws in place, and so the statute, uh, uh, frankly, is, is confusing um, and probably not very impactful as far as actually improving reading scores. And so uh, uh, we'll be working with the legislature during this session to um, uh, try and find a, a, a clear pathway uh, toward a new literacy policy that fuses those together and, and uses the uh, uh, resources to um, have an impact. Thanks, everyone.